Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about a dedicated listing room spending six figures on acoustic treatment. It's done a lot because of surface area requirements. Larger rooms, more surface area requirements, more treatment. So we got noise transmission is our first issue that we have to consider in all critical listing environments. The noise floor, you could think about it as being in a glass of water. You're, you're sitting in a glass and there's water in the glass and noise is the water level. So as the noise floor rises, you have to generate more sound to, to rise above the noise floor. So if the noise floor is lower, you can play at lower volumes and increase your resolution there. So it's always a good idea with noise is to make sure that we have the quietest environment that space and budget could afford. Now, noise transmission is expensive, okay? But you got to do the four walls, the floor, and the ceiling. You've got to isolate this critical listening environment from that noise. And the only way to do it is to build the shell, like a tortoise shell. That's how you have to think about the barrier. It's a tortoise shell. It's going to keep noise from leaving. It's going to keep energy or sound from coming in. And that's the goal. You have to get the lowest noise floor you can so that you increase your resolution. You gotta be careful here with noise. It's a budget breaker. It can be three to four times more expensive than the treatment, the absorption and diffusion inside the room. Remember, we got two situations. We got energy coming in, we got energy leaving, and then we got the energy in the room to deal with. So this is absorption and diffusion inside. This is barrier technology, noise transmission. Noise from a source is transmitting into the room and also transmitting out of the room and disturbing others. So noise is a real first variable that has to be addressed, okay? So we get cognizant of the cost and then we have to focus on the treatment. There's two types of acoustical treatment. We have absorption and diffusion. Those are the only two kinds. There's hybrids out there, of course, but most of them are marketing nonsense. So stick with the basics. Stick with the basics, absorption and diffusion. Then we have two types of acoustical issues in all of our rooms, pressure and reflections. Pressure is lower frequency. Reflections is middle and high frequency. People have a, such a hard time understanding that. I've tried so many different ways to explain it, but people still don't understand it. I think the difficulty is they can't see it. They can only hear it. And some can't hear it that well, I guess. I don't know. But if you can just visualize pressure as low frequency waves, look at this graphic. You can't see the pressure, but that's what it looks like if you could see it. It oscillates through the room. And it's really long wavelengths of energy that don't fit. When it doesn't fit, it goes through the wall, is reflected back into the room, or is absorbed by the wall if the wall's correctly designed. Pressure and reflections. Reflections are more of a middle and high frequency issue. Think of reflections for voice. That's how you have to look at that, all right? Both of these, and here's another difficult issue people have a hard time understanding. Pressure and reflections, different kinds of treatment. A great example of this misunderstanding, if you will, is foam. People think foam is a pressure absorbing technology. It's not, it can't be. Open cell foam is to manage reflections for middle and high frequencies. Foam is not a base absorber. I get calls every day where people say that. The industry has done a great job of misinforming people. And I wouldn't keep saying this if I didn't keep hearing it every day. So I know it exists. All right. So pressure and reflections. Look at the reflection graphic. Straight line energy bouncing off all the walls. And we know that contributes to reverb, right? Completely different. 
The wave graphic and the reflection graphic couldn't be more different. And I hope that illustration will kind of help you understand what's going on here. And both of those situations, the wave graphic and the reflection graphic, take different treatment technologies. It's just physics, and you have to abide by the laws of physics. Remember, physics is the law, everything else is the suggestion. Geez, I wish people would quit suggesting that foam is a base trap, though. It can't be. And it's just, it's a waste of time to even think like that. Tap. Type, amount, and position. You have to choose the right technology. You got to get enough of it, and you have to put it in the correct place. Every wall surface is different. Remember, we have three sound fields to treat in a room. Floor to ceiling, sidewall to sidewall, and the length, right? Three sound fields all have different frequency and amplitude problems. There is no one technology that fits all situations. You have to quantify and qualify those two issues, those three issues and you have to assign the appropriate treatment. Pressure and reflections are on all surfaces. You can't avoid them. You're generating energy inside of a box. That energy has to be released, it has to be contained, and it has to be managed. There's just variables that have to be met because our ultimate goal is resolution. So going back to our first issue here about the noise transmission, with all this going on inside the room, the last thing we want is the noise floor of the room to be high because we only have so much space in the room to treat. So for fighting noise also with pressure and reflection issues, we're beat before we start. That's why some rooms are so small for the usage that it can't, it just can't happen. And we'll be, we'll be happy to tell you that, you know. Carbon absorbing wall. There's our answer to the pressure problem. Pressure fills the room. The room is a container. You could think about when a low frequency note goes into the room, say 30, 40 cycle note. Think of the room as doing this, expanding and contracting. Because it does, you just don't see it, okay? So it's pressure. So the carbon and technology installing it in the wall turns the whole room into a pressure management device. And if you do 16 inch on set or studs, you've got 14 and a quarter, 14 and a half inches between the studs that you can manage this pressure along the whole wall surface, right? So you can actually tune the room every 14 and a half inches. And we adjust the thickness of the carbon absorber, which improves the rate of absorption at that wall location. Because remember, every wall location has a different frequency and amplitude problem. With the ability to tune it every 14 and a half inches, this is why when we build new rooms, we can guarantee response. So it's important to know how to manage things, okay? And our carbon absorber wall can do that. What do we got here? Turn the wall into a frequency management system. Well, that's what we just talked about. The CAW is a pressure management system. Doesn't have anything to do with mids and highs. It's a low frequency pressure management system because it's sealed. It's a diaphragmatic absorber, which is a sealed unit. Remember, reflections work on airflow, molecular velocity across the surface area. So it's not sealed. Pressure devices are sealed devices because they have to deal with pressure, all right? Reflection management, we have two, two scenarios we can use, absorption and diffusion. Absorption foam is a great technology. Open cell foam, lightweight, economical, predictable, and consistent in performance. You can see our performance for our foam here. That took me eight years and $2 million to get that curve. Compare it to the Oralex and Sonex competition. It's night and day different. It's linear. It's smooth. Why would you use 
a technology that has spatial irregularities, gaps in the frequency response curve of its performance. It's like cutting off your arm and putting a Band-Aid on. It's not going to stop the blood. You're going to die. It's just not going to work. So you have to manage the correct absorption. Diffusion is the next option that we have. Diffusion is a technology to make a small room sound larger. We've done numerous videos on the criteria that you have to get right before you bring diffusion into the picture. Reverb times have to be universal through the whole room. Attack and decay rates have to be linear. And there's just other things that have to be met. And you meet those through absorption. You got to get those right first. Or diffusion will make your room sound worse and drain your bank account. Diffusion is expensive. Some of our diffusers have 90 pieces. Can you imagine the labor costs we have to go through to cut all that? Now we have CNC machines that do it, but think about that. One product with 90 pieces. The carbon filter that goes inside our CAW system has 30 sub pieces. So you have a lot of prep work. So lots of labor costs. Material costs not as high as labor these days, especially with some of our technology. So two channel for diffusion, a front and a rear wall approach is great. It just makes the sound feel larger, taller, deeper. You have to balance out the prime number that you use for the front and the rear wall. Distance is a very critical variable because you need enough distance for that lower frequency of the diffuser. Diffuser has a frequency response just like a speaker. So you want enough distance for that low frequency response to fully travel. If it can't fully travel, you're going to get phase. And that's where it can make your room sound worse. You got to be careful with diffusion. Diffusion is very expensive. It can be two to three times more than your absorption cost. So you want to make sure you're doing the right thing, you're using the correct prime number. We had a project where a client was doing DIY and he built the wrong prime number. And he built like 80 units. So we're trying to figure out how I can use those 80 units in another project and then he can rebuild the correct prime number. So you have to be very, very careful here because you're covering large amounts of surface area. That's how you get the six figures on acoustic treatment. A large room, large surface area, and you're building products that are two foot by two foot and covering six, 700 square feet of surface area. So it's a lot of product, it's a lot of labor, and it's a lot of material cost. Larger rooms, obviously, you've got a lot of treatment type amount and the proper positioning to consider. Dedicate a listening room. Spend six figures on acoustic treatment. It's done. We do it a lot, depending on the size of the room and the resolution requirements of the client. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple of days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.